Into the danger area! Oh, it's in! This is Kaoru Mitoma. You might remember him as a guy from Japan's national team who infamously assisted the game-winning goal against Spain. You know, the one that was almost going out before he did the most anime-like thing I've ever seen and saved it literally less than a centimeter away from going out of play. Easily one of the craziest plays I've ever seen. Because the interesting thing about Mitoma is that he probably has one of the most unique and strange journeys to becoming a professional footballer that I've ever seen. From being recognized at a young age as a skilled prodigy in Japan, who one day dreamed of making it to the pros, only to be eventually offered a legitimate professional footballing contract to then turn around and instead pursue a degree in sports science. It might sound counterintuitive, like if you wanted to be a pro, why not just accept the contract and start your career, right? Well, it's a lot more complicated than that, because as crazy as it sounds, today it seems like it's starting to pay off. And now with Mitoma finally starting to make a name for himself in the global and European stage in just the past few months alone, I think it's time you all heard his story. Mitoma grew up in Kanagawa, Japan to an average middle-class family. As such, he had a very typical Japanese childhood. Of course, in Japan and many other Asian societies in general, academics are seen as a priority. And although both parents had a background in sports, they emphasized to the young Mitoma that he should work hard in his studies to get into a good college and have a good career. But the problem was, as he got older and older, when he played football, he realized he was simply better than the other kids. And at the age of 10, after joining Japanese Division I Team Academy, Kawasaki, he realized he wanted football to become his main job. And he'll say, well, of course he would, but you don't understand how seriously he took it for a 10-year-old kid. And boy, did he take it seriously. I'd argue more serious than even most pros today. And that's because the young Mitoma, while being a ball boy for a Japanese league match, watched the pros in Japan from the sidelines and thought to himself, how can I become like them? And while most players watching their idols decide to go and train hard, Mitoma went a step ahead and decided to literally study the pros. In his search for how he can grow up and have the highest chances of becoming a pro, he looked at what they did to train, looked at their tactics, and even looked at their diet. This man, in the most sports anime plot I've ever seen, unknowingly went on the path to studying sports science as a kid. Mitoma might have not exactly known it back then at the moment, but he was asking the right questions, trying to understand how the pros train, how they play on the pitch, the right tactics to use, and looking at their nutritional intake is incredibly important to athletes. And luckily, today's sponsor, Athletic Greens, is here to help. The AG1 from Athletic Greens is honestly the best nutritional supplement I've ever tried. I used to take several vitamin and mineral pills for my daily routine, but now AG1 is the only one that I need. AG1 supports your energy, gut health, immunity, mental clarity, and recovery without having to take multiple products. There's no competing with the amount of different vitamins and nutrients in just one scoop of AG1. And the fact that it's sourced from real foods and superfoods condensed down into a bioavailable form means that your body can use and absorb it very efficiently. I mean, honestly, just look at how jam-packed AG1 is with all their different vitamins and minerals. You have it all from vitamin C, fiber, calcium, prebiotics, probiotics, and many, many more. And the best part for me is that it tastes amazing. Not too sweet, but with a hint of pineapple and vanilla. It's a taste that you won't get tired of. So if you want to add AG1 to your daily nutritional routine, click the link in my description and get a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. Don't put a price tag on your own health. Thanks to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. Anyways, Mitomo would go through the rest of his childhood with the mentality of learning what the pros do in order to be like them. But in life, theory isn't everything. So Mitoma had to go out there on his youth league and apply that knowledge by slapping his opponents around the way he knew best. Mitoma had always been the best dribbler around. He would eventually become the captain for his under-15 squad where he earned the reputation for being a tactician on the pitch. I kid you not when his teammates would say that he used a self-developed theory to read the opponent's actions and get ahead of them. I know, he's literally acting like a main character of the popular football anime, Blue Lock. But the more and more you listen to Mitoma's journey, you'll realize it could literally be 
be its own plot of anime, because throughout the years you can see him develop even better as a dribbler. He was such a standout talent in Japan that Kawasaki wanted to promote Mitoma to their first team as soon as he graduated high school. But in a shock move that surprised everyone, even though it was always his dream to become a pro, he told his club he wanted to fulfill his parents' wishes of going to college. Like, can you believe if someone like Neymar, instead of going to Barcelona, all of a sudden decided he wanted to go to the University of Rio de Janeiro? That would be insane. But this was all part of Mitoma's plan. Because he was smart, he saw how most young guys moving up would not see enough playtime and would even struggle for several seasons. He also worked on getting a sports science degree in order to maximize his knowledge on training, diet, and recovery. All the things that would help him to bolster his talents even further and give him an even better chance at truly making it to the big leagues. But most of all, he used all his knowledge and experience to write his graduating thesis on the science of dribbling. And because Mitoma isn't the fastest or most athletic player, he had to rely on skill to beat his defenders. And his research helped him immensely to max out the best aspects of his game to its full potential. This has led to Mitoma mastering all the small details and subtle techniques that really make your dribble as effective as possible. And we can see him putting his theory to the test. You can see with his dribbling that Mitoma maximizes the use of feints and subtle body movements to trick and throw his defenders off. He also paired this up with what he sees as an optimal stance for attacking the ball that maximizes change of pace and movement ability. Mitoma was able to form this theory for dribbling while observing players who were good versus the ones who were bad and decided to analyze the difference to see why that was. And decided to analyze the difference to see why that was. As simple as it sounds, it's actually quite brilliant. But just considering the rarity of a professional footballer doing actual research and presenting data to improve his own skill has never really been seen before, and it's paid off massively for Mitoma, as he's already distinguished himself from other Japanese footballers of his generation. And after he graduated university, he finally took up the offer to join his youth club's first division team, where Mitoma was surprising Japanese football fans throughout the country with his skill. In his short time playing in Japan, Mitoma had a very impressive 30 goals and 20 assists in 61 appearances, helping Kawasaki win the league title and being named into the league's best 11. An incredible debut, despite him being a little older than your typical debuting pros throughout the world. He would also go on to win the Emperor's Cup, which is essentially like your Copa del Rey or FA Cup, and win the Japanese Super Cup as well. So just in a short amount of time, Mitomo won basically everything you could win in Japan. Now it was time for him to make the next step, and he would finally get recognition and make a move to Europe where he joined Premier League side Brighton but first went on loan to Union SG in the Belgian First Division. And Mitoma's first goal would later turn into a hat-trick shortly after, ultimately ending the season with a decent 8 goals and 4 assists in 29 matches. But what he was really known for was the entertaining ways he'd beat defenders off the dribble. But it really wasn't until this 2022-23 season that Mitoma really started to catch people's attention when he finally went on to play for Brighton. Ever since his debut, he's been capturing the hearts of fans everywhere. His playstyle and unique way of dribbling really became more widely known. Mitoma has also been incredible for the club so far, having 5 goals and 2 assists in 18 matches. But more so than that, he's been a huge factor in Brighton doing quite well this season. They're currently in 6th place but can easily sneak up to 5th if they can continue the pretty good form they've been on as of late. The guy has just been phenomenal. Even for Japan in the World Cup, he was a huge factor in the upsets that they made, and it's no secret that Japanese football isn't quite yet up there with the rest of the world's best, but they really showed last year that nothing is impossible, and Mitomo was a huge factor in Japan's incredibly entertaining World Cup run. Guys like Shinji Kagawa, Keisuke Honda, and now Kaoru Mitoma are really paving the way for Japanese football to improve. So who knows, eventually they might finally get their hands on the World Cup. But if there's anything you can learn from Mitoma, it's that taking some time to master your craft is definitely not a bad idea. There's more than just one path to achieve your goals. There's no need to rush or feel left behind. Just keep working hard and improving.